You are at the uh, headquarters of River Shore Motorsports. Uh, we've been here now about six, seven months. Obviously a lot more room for us. It's allowed us to have all the bays for the race cars, manufacturing flow that allows us to support the cars and whatever we need, whether it be a cage or arms or prep, everything under this roof, we do all of our own work. And this is uh, the aftermath of Parker. That was the first real big race for us to debut the turbo after probably about six, eight months of really intense testing and really to showcase the four cars. And we obviously had high hopes because it's our home track. <laughs> but as Parker always is, tough race. Uh, each car had kind of a different scenario that happened. All the testing now has been fantastic, but you know, we got to go 250 miles, so we're going to run a good, strong pace. Got to get these BFGs and methods ready. You know, a top five, I just want the car to finish and not have any issues. You know, putting 100 cars on the track on a 60 mile course we're gonna have our hands full all day I think all of our cars are we've got a couple guys starting first I'm starting first and then my dad and Derek 37 it's kind of nice because normally we get in the bad draw and we have to start in the back and make our way up but now we could kind of pace ourselves and stay up front I'm going to be driving the first two laps, uh, and then my brother Brian is going to take over uh, the second two. I was hoping they wouldn't grade this course so that we had a rough, rough course, but it's okay because by the time I get in the car, it will be rough. My goal is to win this race. I mean, we got a good start, we got a good car, so we want to kick off the first race of the season with a win. I'm just hoping that we don't have to put a wrench on them and we get some luck because at the end of the day you got to have some luck here with as much dust and as many cars that are going to be on the track. So we kind of put together a game plan starting 35th. We thought, you know, get out in front of the guy next to us so that we could get into the sand wash without having a bunch of dust. We started first and we lined up with Nia Chapman. We got the whole shot. We started picking off some unlimiteds and stuff. We were making our way up. We were running first physically for a while. Derek started out Parker, lap one, fantastic. Was right behind Braden and actually was catching him. Braden's a lot like a Tasmanian devil mixed with a squirrel. Can you put like a squirrel head on him? <laughs> hey, I'm doing an interview here. Keep it down. really, really well. It was kind of right at the pace that we figured. We had a little bit of an incident near the end of the first lap. Where we got together with a turbo car. <laughs> After
after lap one, uh, we were coming in through the rock pile and we decided to call the pits and say, hey, listen, should we check on the exhaust? And we pulled into the pits real quick and unfortunately we ended up uh, finding we had a CV boot off. So being down for 20 minutes, uh, Braden started first in the NA. We finished the work on the turbo right about the time he came through on his lap. So. By the time I got to the top of the sand wash, he and I went down the pole line going to Midway and I called him on the radio and said, I'm coming. <laughs> My co-driver said, it looks like the turbo is behind us and all of a sudden I hear him screaming. Turbo just completely launched it on this power pole jump. Pulled over and let him by and they went flying by. I don't even think they lifted on that power pole road. Dude, whoever's driving that thing, he's a, he's a madman right now. So we actually went by him and then uh, we kind of had a mishap at the pits in Midway and um, we heard 77. Well, they were trying to call the 1977 into the pits and so the guys thought that they needed to call me into the pits so we ended up having a little mishap there so I got behind Braden again. After lap one we're all doing really well. They, had, they were up near the front of the uh, pack and then it's off-road racing. We had some uh, mechanical issues. Uh, unfortunately, that affected every car. Lap two started really good until we crossed Shea and I hit a big rock that was not on the course. Driver error. Came into the pits, had a pretty good pit stop. Brian got in the car and unfortunately uh, didn't go very far and we had a couple of axle issues. Breaking both rear axles. Um, we only had one on board uh, and so that was the end of our day. Scott, I think, went 14 miles. Derek gave me the car in great standing, and then I decided to floor it. Was passing a car that decided to not let me pass. So I decided to jump over his back tire and somehow land on all four. Well, I landed on two and banged down on the other two pretty hard, bending the trailing arm pretty bad, which made it impossible to steer. And then kind of a fluke thing on Braden's car with the uh, bracket breaking and getting into a water hose and let all the water out of the car. And then we saw a temp start shooting up and we didn't know what it was, so we pulled over. He ended up having to stop and, and salvage getting some water back in the motor so he could get back to the pits. We have the capability to win. I know the wins are coming. It's just a matter of time. Stop saying uh, we were leading until we broke. <laughs> uh, yeah, Braden, um, he's got a lot to learn from me. I can tell you that much. We kind of came out of there licking our wounds and right now all the prep work's going on to go to Laughlin and uh, change the course of the outcome for us. Cancel! Laughlin is out of here. Don't listen to Tim at all. We're going to works, baby. I love the series. I like all the rounds and the competition is really strong. There's a lot of really good drivers. Havasu especially, um, that's one of my favorite tracks. It's more like a desert race, like our DATD cars. We started off second row, 
Got the whole side, and we were just gaining time every lap. The lagoon jump, that thing was huge. I mean, going up to it, you want to let off, but you just have to leave it pinned and hopefully you clear it. If not, you're gonna endo and go in the lagoon. Not a lot of people hit it. Um, they're trying to conserve the car. They didn't want to break it, but I had to hit it every lap. up walking away with the wind. Super bummed about uh, Laughlin being canceled, but right now um, we're moving forward, getting the cars prepped and everything for Silver State, so we're ready for that race. 